Hello, third and fourth grade. Today we're gonna to start looking at the next section of our science book. And this is chapter five, part three, talking about water, steam, and ice. So let's start reading. Karen put some ice cubes into a glass. Before she could fill the glass with water, the telephone rang. Her favorite aunt was calling to wish her happy birthday. They talked for some time and then Karen returned to the kitchen where she found water instead of ice in her glass. What happened to Karen's ice cubes? I bet you already know. When she put them into her glass, the ice cubes were solid. But by the time she came back, they were liquid because they had, that's right, melted. The substance in her glass did not change. It was still water, but the water had had a change of state. What caused the water to change from a solid to a liquid? Well, we already answered that. The ice cubes melted, changing it from solid to liquid. You will remember that water is matter and that all matter is made up of molecules. And remember, when we talked about matter um, in the earlier section over here, we talked about that it takes up space and has weight. When the ice melted or changed from a solid to a liquid, something happened to the molecules. So let's read about these states that water has. Matter can exist in three states or forms. Matter can be a solid, a liquid, or a gas. Water is the only substance which exists naturally in all three states. When water is a solid, it is called ice. When water is a liquid, in its liquid state, we usually just call it water. Water is a gas when it is water vapor. Hot water vapor is often called steam. Whether water is ice, liquid water, or water vapor, it is still water. The substance of water has not changed. Water is made is always made of the same kind of molecules, two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Only the state that the water is in has changed. So let's look at what water is like as a solid. Solids. Many kinds of matter are found naturally as solids. Rocks are solids. What is water called when it is a solid? That's right, it's called ice. Solids have definite shape and take up a certain amount of space. Solids do not change shape easily. Solids are very dense. So those are some, those are some important things to remember about solids. Now when we say that they're very dense, this means that the molecules in solids are packed very close together. Molecules in solids do not move quickly, but they do vibrate or move back and forth ever so slightly, like my hand is kind of vibrating or shaking right now. It may surprise you to learn this. When you look at a piece of ice, your desk, a book, some other solid, do you see it shaking? No, you don't see it vibrating, but it is. The molecules are so small and vibrate so weakly, you cannot see or feel any movement. And remember, we talked about over here, earlier in the chapter about the size of molecules and how they are very, very small. So it's no surprise that we don't see them vibrating. Liquids. When matter has no shape of its own, yet takes up a certain amount of space, the matter is a liquid. Vegetable oil, orange juice, and milk are examples of liquids. When you think of water, you probably picture it in its liquid state. Usually when we say water, we don't think of ice or we don't think of steam. We think of the liquid form of it, its liquid state. Liquids change shape easily. You've probably noticed that liquid takes the shape of any container it is put into. And this is very true. If you put water in a cup, it takes the shape of a cup. But if you take that same amount of water and put it into a bowl, it takes on the shape of the bowl. Or if you take that same amount of water and you were to put it in a ice cream pail, it takes on the shape of the ice cream pail. Unlike ice, water changes its shape to fit its container. Liquids are not as dense as solids. The molecules of liquids are spread further apart than the molecules of solids. Molecules in liquids vibrate far more rapidly than molecules of solids do. Um, so we can see that kind of here. This picture up here shows the solid, the molecules in solids, and they're put together really, really tight. So there's not a whole lot of movement that can happen here. If we look at the molecules in liquids, though, they're not packed in nearly as tight, and so they're able to vibrate or move around a whole lot more. Molecules of liquids vibrate and travel around within the liquid. 
Let's turn the page and keep reading about the third state of water, gases. Matter that has no shape and does not fill up a certain amount of space is a gas. Many gases are colorless. Air is a mixture of gases. Water in its gaseous form is found in the air. Do you remember what water is called when it is a gas? That's right, it's called steam. Water vapor, or called water vapor. Water vapor is invisible. You've probably seen clouds of very hot water vapor or steam above a boiling kettle or pot. You did not actually see the water vapor. You saw extremely tiny drops of liquid water carried along in the steam. Gas has the lowest density of the three states of matter. Molecules in gases are far apart and are the fastest moving molecules. They, bump, they whiz and around and bump into each other all the time. And we can see that here in this picture. They're even more spread around here than they were over here for our liquid or for our solid. Amazing water. Because of the way molecules of water fit together, water is able to do some amazing things. The molecules in water stick together far more readily than the molecules of any other liquids do. This quality is called surface tension. Because water has such a high degree of surface tension, objects which are heavier than water will float on the surface unless the surface film of the water is broken. Water is able to dissolve many substances. When a solid substance is dissolved, its molecules become part of the liquid which it is dissolving it. Water is able to dissolve large amounts of substances. God gave water this special ability so that the water can carry the nutrients which plants, animals, and people need. And if you think about that, we dissolve all sorts of things in water. Um, we dissolve different powders in water to make Kool-Aid or things like that. And because water has the ability to dissolve these many different substances, it can carry a lot of different nutrients to plants, animals, and people. And then let's read this something to do down here at the bottom. Observing surface tension and dissolving substances. Observing surface tension. You will need a bowl of water, a small piece of window screen, an eyedropper, and some liquid detergent. Carefully place the screen flat on the surface of the water. Surface tension will keep the screen afloat, even though the screen is heavier than the water. Try placing a cork on top of the screen. Both the screen and the cork will float if you do this demonstration carefully and do not break the surface of the water. So what they mean by that is you have to very carefully set it down on top of the screen. Otherwise, if you push too hard, you'll break that surface tension. Now, with the eyedropper, add a drop of the liquid detergent near your raft, which means near that piece of uh, screen and with the uh, cork on top of it. So what happens? Well, what do you think is going to happen? And why? Let's keep reading to find out. Dissolving substances. You will need two large gas glasses, a measuring cup, a spoon, and 12 sugar cubes. Fill both glasses with equal amounts of water. Use the measuring cup to make sure. Add the sugar cubes one at a time to only one of the glasses of water. Stir the water after adding each cube. When all the cubes have been dissolved, notice the levels of water in both glasses. The levels will be almost the same, even though you added several cubes of sugar to one glass. Because the water dissolved the sugar completely. How does this work? Hmm. There are many empty spaces too small for you to see between the molecules of water. Remember, in, a li in its liquid state, water is spread out. So there's space in here for the sugar cube molecules to dissolve in between. When the, water, when the water dissolved the sugar or broke it down into molecules, the molecules of sugar fit into the empty spaces between the molecules of water. So God has made water very amazing with many different properties. And it's very cool that it is the only matter that in its natural form can ex exist in all three states, in the states of solid, in the state of liquid, and in the state of gas.